Hello there. This video is going to be all about the Obsidian Canbean plugin. You know, I've tried several plugins for managing tasks in Obsidian, including the database folder, projects, tasks, and with a number of things. I just want something simple that I can visually pick up straight away as to what's going on, but that I can also customize for my needs. So what I'm going to do here is show you the installation and operation of the Kanban plugin to make your life a lot easier as far as keeping an eye on what's going on. Let's get into it. Now, the concept of Kanban boards all started back in the early 1940s, and the first Kanban system was developed by a gentleman by the name, and don't hold me to the pronunciation, but Taiichi Ono. And he was an industrial engineer that worked for the Toyota Motor Company. And the whole purpose of Kanban boards was to keep a track of the production process within Toyota. Now, they are used widely today, and a number of organisations use them for tracking what's going on. So that's what we're going to have a look at today to make it a very easy little task management system for ourselves within Obsidian. Okay, let's install the plugin. So we'll go down to the bottom of our Obsidian vault here to the settings, click on that, up to community plugins if you have a new vault restricted mode needs to be turned off browse community plugins and we'll search for kanban and here it is here and we'll install it and now we will enable it now there's some documentation below here that's worthwhile having a look at and there is a full set of documentation also located within this link and well worthwhile going and having a look at that documentation just to determine what you can do as well haven't bothered touching anything up here because it's just as easy to set it up and then change it as you go along to suit your particular requirements. Now, one thing I know from using the plugin is that the presentation of the Kanban board, it still has traditional markdown behind it. And you will often find that you'll have the Kanban board showing and then you might have a look at the markdown and the there isn't a default in the command palette to switch it between Markdown and Kanban view. So I've set up a hotkey and we've got here toggle between Kanban and Markdown mode. I have put a plus there, Control, Shift and K, which I find is easy to remember for Kanban. And then that will allow us to toggle between the two modes. And you'll see more of this as we set the board up. And we're ready to go with setting up our first board. First of all, in Obsidian, I'm in the, my training vault at the moment. I'm just going to uh, press uh, Control P to bring up the control palette. I'm going to press K for the Kanban, and I'm going to say, create a new board. So it's called here, Untitled Kanban. And then on the right-hand side here, you can see that I can now add different lists. So to add a list, to just start one to do, that one's done and you can see it's come over here and on the left hand side, we put in progress, pending, just for the sake of it, just to show you how it works, and done. And that's okay, that's all done now. So we can cancel that and get rid of it out of the frame. And now we can add our cards to each of the boards. So obviously they're all going to start in the to-do area. So I'll just show you how to add one card because I've already prepared a Kanban board for us to have a look at, but this is just the process that you'll go through. So you click and add a card and put the card title, things to do. Now in the settings, we've set up that shift and enter will give us a new line and enter will put the card in place. So we'll use shift and enter. So this is just a card that we are using test purposes. And there's our card. So that's all there is to adding cards there. All right, so now let's go to one that I have prepared earlier. And you can see that I've got several lists here, to do, pending response, brick wall, in progress, and done. And you can set those lists up however you want. So the to do is Adding cards, new cards are appended to the list by default. So that happens in the settings. You can set whether to put them at uh, the end of the list or at the beginning of the list. 
Editing cards, shift and enter, which I already mentioned, puts the text on a new line, and this can be changed also in the settings. Now, you note from card one, open the menu, which is here, right, more options, and put a new note from card, click on that, and it pops up here to the right. Now, I don't particularly like that. I'd much prefer to see it come up in a new tab. But anyway, that's how it works at the moment, and I can't find a way of making it open in a tab. If anyone knows how to do that, please add a comment below the video here or in the article. Now, we'll just add a note here. So uh, this is a note for the card, right? And that is now done. We can close the note if we want to, and you can see that it's got the link here. So we go straight back, and now it's opening it in the tab. Right, so uh, open a new tab. There we go. Now we've got it happening uh, like that. That's how I like to see things in tabs. So that's just how I work. You may work completely differently. Now, I would also add that in the settings here, if we go down to the bottom, uh, Kanban, in this area here, note template, you can actually specify what template you might like to use to set up a new note. So they're the templates that I've already got there, template, you know, note composer template. But I also have a note template in my main vault that I use. And I would probably put that one there because that's the one that I'm generally going to use if setting up a new note. And the note folder will be where the notes will be placed, which is probably best in your inbox. And then relocate them as needed. The second option that you've got here when you're working with these individual cards is to copy a link to the card. And you can see here I've got one that I've called copy link to card and what it does is it lets you insert a link back to the card from anywhere in your vault. So your card can't be in edit mode. If you put it in edit mode then you're not going to get anything come up in the right hand menu and there's there's an X there to delete it. So we've got to be in standard mode. And then we can right click on the note and it's got copy link to card. And that's the one that we want. Alternately, you can click on the three dots and that also brings up the menu with copy link to card. So let's do this one, copy the link to the card. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go over to this testing note that I've got in uh, the vault. And I'm just going to say, open it in a new tab. And I'm going to go here, I've done one earlier for a test, and Control V, and there is the link back to the note in the Kanban board. Now, you can see here that it's referencing a block, but at this stage, it's only taking it back to the whole Kanban board, probably because there's not that much in it. I don't know, I haven't seen one that's completely full, but it is actually referencing a block. So that is how the copied link to the card works. Over here in the pending response, I've got a, well, I've got a few extra lists. I've got pending response, brick wall, in progress, and done. Now, the first thing that I would do if I was working with a to-do list is then when I started on the task, I would move it into the in progress list. So let's take this one here and we'll just take it over and drop it in the in-progress list. So that is now done, and that's over there. Now, if I then, in the note, because I went, if I went to my note, I was saying create that file. Here is my note on that uh, letter sent to Harry Blogs. All right, and I've got that done. So now I can go close the note. And I'll go back here and editing cards will take me straight back to there to that note and you can see that it's got the information on it already now if I've take, sent that note off to Harry blogs to get a response I can then move the note over to pending response now if Harry really mucks up and doesn't send me the response within the time frame that I want I can add it to the brick wall because that's what I've hit and then I've got to work on these ones to knock them down and move them back into the in progress 
area. So as you can see, you can move these notes around however you wish so that you're keeping a quick visual record of what's going on and what stage your particular tasks are up to. Obviously, the last one here is the done list. You can leave them there if you wish uh, for motivation purposes to have a great long list of uh, things that you've done. Or uh, you can click on the card again in the right hand side and you can archive the card which will remove it from the list and put it into the archives. So there is the prepared earlier Kanban and I hope that gives you an idea as to how you can set it up and keep an eye on all your tasks. And finally I thought I'd better show you a little bit about the archives because they can be a little bit mysterious. Over here I've got my done list. Now I can archive the card by bringing up the right hand menu on the mouse and I can either archive it or delete it. So I'll archive it there and now you can see that it's gone. Now if I click on the list there is nothing here to get that card back. And what you need to do, and the same if you actually archive the list, by the way, archive cards or archive the list, as it says there, is to go into markdown mode. Now, recall I had a hotkey for control shift and K. So I'll hit that now, and here's the markdown version of the Kanban board. And you'll see that it's got done down here. Each of these are actually heading two and this is how it's laid out in real markdown and down here it's got the archive and it's put that in there so you can actually see it this will be only available though in markdown mode what it does when you put the card into archive according to the settings is that it is marked the date and time that the card was archived so i'm just going to copy this here Control c or Command c depending on what your system is. Control v and that is now done. I can delete this from here because I don't need it any longer. And then Control shift and K again. There is my card back, but it is also now showing the archive list. So I can Control k go back there, and I don't want my archive list. So I'll just delete that. Control Shift K again, and we're back to where we were with our done list and our list as it was. So I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Obsidian Kanban plugin and that it's of help to you. I find that it's a really useful way of doing it. There are advanced methods as well where you can link one Kanban back to a main one, but that would be a matter for a separate video, but you can do it, very useful if you want to run Kanbans for individual projects and then keep the projects in a Kanban board on your home note. So I'll see you next time. Cheers.